In chapter three, we will be introduced to probability, and in section 3.1, we will study probability terminology. An event is truly random if each outcome has an equal chance of occurring. A random event is something where each outcome has an equal chance of occurring. For example, if you flip a coin, the coin can either land on heads or it can land on tails. Each outcome has an equal chance of occurring, therefore flipping a coin is a random event. Here's an informal definition. The chances or likelihood that an event will occur. A little more formal definition. Probability is a predicted long run relative frequency of an event, meaning if we did something many times over, the probability of an event is a proportion of times we saw the event actually occur. For example, you could flip a coin five times, and all, and the, all five times, the coin could land on heads. That's, that's very possible. But if we flip the coin a thousand times, chances are that half the time, the coin will land on heads, and half the time, the coin will land on tails. So if we did something many times over, such as a thousand times, the probability of an event, the probability of the coin landing on heads, is about half. So probability is, if we did something over and over and over again, the event probability is a proportion of times you saw the event actually occur. Here's a notation for probability. If you're looking at the probability that a person who has a lottery ticket will actually win that lottery, we would say P for probability. In the parentheses, you put the event. So P of W is the probability of this ticket holder winning the lottery. So you would read this as the probability of winning. P is a probability. In the parentheses, you would put the event. Here are some definitions. An outcome is one possible way that something can happen. For example, if you flip a coin, landing on heads is a possible outcome. Landing on tails would also be another outcome. An outcome is uh, one way something can happen. An event is an outcome or a collection or set of outcomes. For example, if you roll a die, Rolling a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5 or a 6 are all outcomes. But rolling an odd, such as a 1, 3, or 5, that's an event. Because rolling an odd is a collection of outcomes. Therefore, rolling an odd is an event. Sample space is a set of all possible outcomes. For example, if you flip a coin, the sample space is heads or tails. If you flip a coin, the only possible outcomes are heads and tails. So the set of all possible outcomes for flipping a coin is heads and tails. And this is a sample space for flipping a coin. If you roll a die, you could either roll a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5 or a 6. So the sample space for rolling a die are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is a sample space for rolling a die. These are all the possible outcomes that we can get if you roll a die. Law of large numbers. The actual or true probability of an event A is estimated by the relative frequency with which the event occurs in a long series of trials. Again, going back to the flipping a coin example, you could flip a coin five times and it could all come up heads each time. That's a likely possibility. but if you flip a coin a thousand times or ten thousand times in a long series of trials, then half the time it'll come up heads and half the time it'll come up tails. Here's how we calculate basic probability. If every outcome has an equal chance of occurring, we can use the f following uh, formula uh, to calculate probability. The probability of event A can be written as P of A, so the probability of event A. This is the number of outcomes in A divided by the number of total possible outcomes. In other words, the number of outcomes of A, since A is the event that we want, this is the number of, uh, number of times that A occurs, divided by 
the total number of possibilities. For example, let's say we roll a six-sided die. Here's a sample space. A sample space is all possible outcomes. So the die can land on one, it can land on two, it can land on three, it can land on four, land on five, or land on six. So the sample space is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, the probability of rolling a one, so what do we want? We want to roll a one. How many times in the sample space does the number one occur? It occurs once. So the number of times what we want, which is rolling a one, the number of outcomes in A, in this case the event is rolling a one, the number of times rolling a one shows up in our sample space is once. The total number of outcomes possible, we have six possible outcomes, so the probability is one over six. Okay, let's take, it, take a look at another example. Let's take, take a look at the probability of rolling an odd number. Well, how many odd numbers do we have? We have one, two, and three odd numbers. Therefore, the number of outcomes in A, event A is rolling an odd. How many outcomes are in this event rolling an odd? Well, there are three outcomes, one, two, and three. The total number of possible outcomes is six. Every fraction needs to be reduced, so the probability of rolling an odd is one half, which kind of makes sense because half the numbers are odd and half the numbers are even. Okay, let's take a look at the probability of rolling a number less than five. So the event is rolling a number less than five. Let's see how many outcomes we have, the number of outcomes in event A. This means how many numbers are less than five. We have one, two, three, four numbers that are less than five. So the number of outcomes in this event are four. The total number of outcomes is six. Be sure to reduce your fraction. So the probability of rolling a number less than five is two thirds. Probability of rolling a number greater than six. Well, on a, on a die, we only have up to six. So the probability of rolling a number greater than six, well, the number of outcomes in event A, the event is rolling a number greater than six, we can't roll a number greater than six. So the number of outcomes event A is zero, total is six. Remember if the zero is on the numerator, we take zero divided by six, our answer is zero, which means that this is impossible. When the probability of an event is zero, that means this event is impossible. Okay, here's an example. 12 out of 33 students earned a B on an exam. Based on this information, what is the estimate of probability of B? In other words, the probability that a randomly chosen college student earns a B on an exam. Well, so we would say the probability of a randomly chosen student earning a B on the exam is 12 out of 33, which is going to be in decimal form 0.363636. Um, let's round to the thousands place, so let's round to three decimals. Uh, the third decimal is a three, the four decimal is a six, so since we want to round to the thousands place, we look at the number after. If this number is five or higher, we round up. If it's four or lower, we stay the same. So since the number after the thousands place is five or higher, then the probability will be 0 0.364. So the probability that a randomly chosen student earns a B on the exam is 0.364. Uh, the next example, please try on your own, and we will go over this in class. OK, next. Um, the sum, here's some rules of probability. The sum of the probability of all possible outcomes is 1 or 100%. So if you take all possible outcomes out of their possibilities, then our answer will be 1 or 100%. 100%. The probability of any event x is non-negative. Here's what that means. It means the probability of an event x occurring is always going to be greater than or equal to 0. If the probability was zero, that means this event is impossible. The probability of any event is at most one. 
So one, it means we're 100% sure that's going to happen. So the probability of any event x is at most one. We can't have a probability greater than one. Okay, the complement of event x is defined as xc. This is the notation for it. This is the complement of event x. Okay, the probability of x or y happening, and we'll talk more about this in a, in a future section, but the formula for that, let's just introduce the formula, is p of x, the probability of event x, plus the probability of event y, minus the probability of x and y. And again, we'll talk more about this in a future section. If x and y are mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive, it means they cannot occur at the same time. For example, uh, flipping a coin and getting heads and getting tails, these are mutually exclusive because you can't get heads and tails at the same time. If x and y are mutually exclusive, then the pro probability of x and y happening is equal to zero. In other words, can we flip a coin and get both heads and tails? That's never going to happen, so its probability is going to be zero. Uh, two events, x and y, are independent if the knowledge that one occurred does not affect the chance of the other occurring. Okay, we'll talk more about independence later on as well. But if x and y are independent events, then the probability of x and y is the probability of x times the probability of y. This is just an introduction. We will talk more about the uh, talk about these in more detail. Let's do one last example. A coin is flipped three times. Let's list the sample space, which means all the possible ways, uh, all the possible outcomes when that coin is flipped three times. Well, what can happen? So for sample space, we use uh, these squiggly brackets. Okay, so let's list out the sample space. Well, we can get three heads. Okay, then let's keep the first one as heads. The second one could be tails. The third one we'll keep as heads. Then we can get head, tail, tail. We can get head, head, and tail. Okay, so we're, remember, we're flipping the coin three times. So these are all possible outcomes. Now let's take the, the, the first head and let's make it into a tail. So what if the first one's a tail? Well, then we're going to have tail, heads, heads. Then we have tail, tail, heads. We have tail, heads, tail. And we have tail, tail, tail. So there are, these are all the possible outcomes we can get if we flip a coin three different times. Okay, now in part B, what is the probability of getting exactly two heads? And it doesn't matter what order we get them in. Exactly two heads. So this one we can't, we can't use because this has three heads. This outcome has exactly two heads. This is only one head. This outcome has two heads. This outcome has two heads. Here we only have one. Here we only have one. And here we have no heads. So the probability of getting exactly two heads, well, how many times does that occur? That occurs one, two, three times. How many total outcomes are there? There are a total of eight outcomes. So the probability of getting exactly two heads is three out of eight. The remainder of the examples, I want you to look at them. I want you to try them by yourself. And we will go over these in class.